these five things that I'm gonna tell you about are ways that I like to learn and they're an amalgam of that research, that studying and that kind of consumption of content around how we learn how we store information, how we can use it. Hey, iLoving friends, welcome back. In this video, I wanna tell you about five ways that I actually learn and study as a doctor. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, I'm Zach with Dr. Eyeball and I'm a first year Aesopers oculoplastic surgery fellow. So growing up in the school system, I was learning a lot of information. I was doing well on the tests, but I always felt like when I would look back on the last five years, the last 10 years, what did I actually know? And I couldn't come up with a good answer to that. A lot of random facts really that weren't very applicable, weren't very practical in any sense. And at that point I had no usable skill. It always kind of irked me, it always kind of bothered me, and it took until I became a second year ophthalmology resident when I finally decided I was just gonna take learning into my own hands and essentially find out how it is that we actually learn. So that sent me down a path of trying to understand how it is that we understand things and how we actually learn things. Something that was lacking in at least my education growing up, how to learn and how to acquire information, store it, encode it in our memories, and then be able to use it and have it readily disposable at my fingertips to use in a practical way. I read books, I watched videos, I wanted to learn how it is that we learn and how to learn best. These five things that I'm gonna tell you about are ways that I like to learn and they're an amalgam of that research, that studying and that kind of consumption of content around how we learn, how we store information, how we can use it. So if you're also bothered by this feeling that you're learning a lot of things, but you're bothered by the fact that you don't know how best to efficiently acquire information and then code it in your brain and then be able to use it readily then this may be helpful. So the first technique is one that I call directed study. And essentially what this is, is learning for a purpose and a very specific purpose. This is highly applicable in medicine. To give you an example, we recently did a biopsy on a mass in a patient's eye socket in their orbit. It turned out to be something that is actually pretty rare called Erdheim-Chester disease. So this is something that's uncommon, it's rare, I wouldn't otherwise know anything about it. And if I were studying this in the traditional sense in the school, I would have read about it and then I would have forgotten about it. But because I saw this patient and it was a memorable experience, me seeing the patient, knowing what this patient looked like, us doing a biopsy on them and then getting a diagnosis and then having to figure out, well, what is the next step in treatment? Do they need to do chemotherapy? Do they need to see this specialist or this specialist? And what is gonna be the follow-up and the prognosis and this kind of thing. Because all of that went into it, when I go to the internet, when I go to the books, when I go to these things, it all can link back to this focal nodal point of this case, this instance. And so my studying all revolves around a specific instance in my life where I had an experience with the actual thing, with the patient, with the thing. And so that is the nodal point. And from that, I can branch out and study things about it that can all tie back to it. So you need some emotional link, some thing that is actually connecting you to the thing that you're trying to remember or study. And actual experiences with a patient are highly effective at encoding those and keeping those stored in your memory. And the information that is tied to them becomes eminently relevant in those instances and that helps you actually learn. So that is directed study. It's having a instance where you have a problem and you need to find solutions and understand facets around the problem and actually studying in order to understand that problem, you then learn and learn for a purpose. And that is gonna help you actually remember what you've learned. So directed studying. The second method that I like to employ involves making it stick. Now there's a really good book on this called Make It Stick and it centers around how we actually learn and process information and encode it in our memory. And so three of the techniques within this subcategory that I like to use in terms of making information stick, making it long lasting are one, active recall. Active recall is essentially retrieving the information that we've learned from our brains rather than just seeing the information passively again. So rather than rereading notes or rereading information or looking at a piece of information and thinking that we've learned it because it can be confused that we are learning something, what we actually do is actively recall. This is where flashcards come into play, things like Anki. So having a question or a prompt or a stimulus or trigger of some sort 
and then building off of that by recalling the information around it, actively recalling it from your brain. When you have to actively retrieve it from your memory, it actually helps encode it in your memory. Don't passively consume information and knowledge that's fine the first time around, but after that, you need to actively recall it for it to stick. The second category within the making it stick broader category is spaced repetition. And what this essentially means, doing something, actively recalling it, learning it, and then doing it again at a later point and doing this more and more repeatedly. So, so there's a certain forgetting curve where the information starts to dwindle and dwindle. But so if you can do spaced repetition before that memory completely dies, it spikes back up and it builds it stronger, it codes it stronger. If you do it more frequently and the more time you can give in between without completely completely forgetting. That helps encode the knowledge and the information within your memory. The third subcategory within the making it stick category is called interleaving. And what this essentially is, is mixing the types of things that you're studying. So an example of this would be major league baseball players who go and do batting practice rather than just getting 50 fastballs in a row and trying to hit those and then 50 curveballs and then 50 change up, mixing them up, interleaving the types of information. And it actually will help it code within your brain and be remembered better. It's harder in the instance, as you can imagine, if you don't know what pitch is coming, it's gonna be a lot harder to hit it, but it actually will help you learn it better in the long run if you are studying and mixing the types of information that you are learning rather than trying to learn everything about the cornea, everything about the retina, everything about oculoplastics. Mixing it up, interleaving it will help you learn it better. It doesn't seem like it at the time because it's a lot harder to study that way and a lot harder to actually get things right when you're trying to do active recall from a bunch of different categories, but it is the better way to learn. The third method that I like to use when I'm studying as a doctor is to expand and relax the idea of what it means to study. What it essentially involves is you have to abandon what we were taught about what is the best way to learn information and actually study it, whether it be just reading textbook or getting your information in a more traditional way. You have to realize that with the advent of social media and the internet in general, there's so many ways to learn. So for me, what this looks like is videos, YouTube, actually going and watching people do surgeries. On YouTube, I was able to learn how to do cataract surgery largely from some of the great teachers on YouTube. It was absolutely amazing. Now, now with Instagram, what I like to do because I'm in oculoplastic surgery is I follow these really good oculoplastic surgeons and I look at their before and after pictures and I look at the before and I say, what did that patient need for surgery? And then I look at the after and I say, what do I think they actually did? And then I look in the description and I see what they actually did. And that trains my eye and it trains my brain to say, if the patient looks like this, this is what I think they need. This is what an expert would do. And this is what the outcome looks like. I'm using Instagram to train my eye based off of these famous oculoplastic surgeons. This is amazing technology. You couldn't do this in the past. So this category, expand and relax. So relax your stringent idea and your paradigm of what it means to study and learn, and then expand the realm of potential information that you are gonna gather from. Use the internet, use videos, use all of this broad resource. You can learn from these things. So expand and relax what it means to learn, and then you can learn more be open, have open mind when it comes to learning. The fourth kind of methodology that I like to use when it comes to studying as a doctor is pursuing what I call frontier knowledge. So this is essentially just learning at the front of the field. So textbooks often lag behind the information that is actually more relevant and more recent when it comes to the front of a field. So for more basic sciences, obviously the textbooks are gonna be good, but when you get more and more subspecialized within medicine, the new relevant information and knowledge, once you have that core foundation and base, is in journal articles. It's learning from the forefront of knowledge. So for me, that means having a subscription to the Ophthalmic Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery Journal because this is where the new information is coming from. So it's important to make sure you're pulling from new information. Don't get too locked in to just sticking to the more archaic forms of information exchange like books that we grew up thinking this is the only way to learn. When you get into medicine, when you get into more subspecialized fields, you have to be willing to use the frontier knowledge. So just journal articles, videos, that kind of thing. So stay at the front of the field so that you can apply these new techniques and things like that. The fifth thing that I actually like to do when I'm studying and kind of learning information as a doctor is visualization. So what do I mean by this? Essentially, when I go to do a surgery for the first time or when I'm trying to perfect a technique within a surgery, what I like to do is visualize it. Days, nights before, I actually imagine myself doing that surgery. Videos of it online, I watch my attendings do it. I imagine myself doing it. I imagine the step. That encodes it in your mind. It's like you've actually done it before you've actually done it. Visualization is such a strong technique when it comes to learning information and applying it. One of the reasons I think that I was able to do cataract surgery on my second day of surgery from start to finish with no assistance in terms of someone actually helping me do any of the steps was because I had visualized doing it so many times before I actually 
actually did it in my mind that it was like I had done it a hundred times. So by case eight, which you can go watch at the link in the description, I was able to do cataract surgery, which is not easy guys. And it's because I visualized it. You have to visualize yourself succeeding in doing the things that you want to do. That helps the information stick when you actually do it. Visualization is a huge technique that I like to use when I'm studying and learning as a doctor. So as you can see, these aren't the traditional ways that we were taught to learn growing up in school. See, a lot of these techniques and methods that I like to use when it comes to learning as a doctor, when it comes to actually truly learning information for a practical way, the way I like to approach it is to imagine that I never went to school at all and I now have this problem in front of me, whether it be a patient's health or a patient's vision. How would I actually go about learning? How would I actually structure the methodology of learning information and then pursuing it that way? And for me, that involves the techniques and the strategies that I just told you. That is how I actually go about learning for the right ways, learning for a purpose, and that is how the information sticks. That's how I learn as a doctor. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Leave a like on it if you did. Subscribe to the channel. I'm Zach with Dr. Eyeball MD. I'll see you guys in the next one.